Hi everyone. There are a lot of ways to think about the way standards like the Common Core work in a system like uh, a school district, a building, um, a high school, elementary school, or even a classroom. One way of framing um, the implementation of something like the Common Core is through lens provided by a theory. And one theory, a theory of uh, system design that has been around in different variations for quite a while is called activity theory. It's been uh, kind of formed under a lot of names, things like um, cultural historical activity theory, social activity theory, but just plain activity theory covers the basic concept. And here's the basics. You have a beginning thing. In this case, it's the learner, okay, or a student. And you have an outcome, which is successful learning or a successful student, okay? So a variety of things impact that student as they go through this process of learning, all right? So this triangle is really, for this case, the process of learning. And these are some of the things that impact that learner. The community, we'll start right in the center, and the community can include um, parents, it can include fellow students, it could include teachers, all kinds of things have an impact on that student. Rules, and we know that rules have a very definite impact, right? from uh, as basic as not allowing or allowing use of a cell phone or a computer to um, requiring that students complete homework or that they meet certain standards. Tools, and tools can include technology, it can include access to websites, it could include um, books, library resources, all kinds of things. And we know all these things have an impact on how a student learns different things, right? Um, you know, if you block uh, access to certain websites, if you provide children with computers, or you cut library uh, services, they all have some kind of an impact. And finally, the division of labor um, refers to essentially what are the different jobs uh, and how do those jobs work that have an impact on the student. So you have this process, right? This learner goes through this activity triangle, which is really sort of their sphere, their world. And as they go through, they, they enter a typical day in school, all these things suddenly become active. You know, there's, there's a measurable effect of what kind of tools are available. Community support has an impact, either positive or negative. It may be negative support, right? Um, teachers, jobs, their duties, things from are, do they have bathroom duty or do they have the kind of learning hall duty all have an impact. Rules and the way those are enforced or not enforced have an impact. So it is not to say that any one of these is the, the crucial factor. It is rather the intersection of all those. And you can see there's multiple intersections that have an impact. You can actually measure what each of these factors are. You can identify them. And you can come up with different things that, that uh, are measurable. Okay, So this is the theory. And like any theories, it may or may not be valid. A lot of people are finding this rather valid. As you think about how to implement something like the Common Core, one of the project options, okay, in your classroom or in uh, your building or district, thinking about all of these different factors, 
and how they weigh into this equation could be very effective. You could think about, perhaps, what do teachers do? What are their responsibilities in this new world where we have proficiency-focused, uh, standards-based learning? Do they do those things, like monitor study halls? Or are study halls different? Are they providing remediation or secondary classes for standards? Um, is the community something that's on the outside of the school? Or does the community become more involved in how schools operate? Do rules currently support standards-based or proficiency-based learning? Well, if you think about it, if you have someone who's learning a little slower or taking more time for a standard, could that affect something like their standing for athletics? Some districts are struggling with that. And finally, tools. Does every child have access to every uh, everything they need to truly meet the standards? Some people who are in districts where uh, technology is limited would argue no. Other people where library staffs have been cut or where uh, book funding accounts um, are not available would argue against that. So this provides one opportunity for you. It's certainly not a requirement by any means that you take any of these into account, but it is an opportunity for you to consider how these, these factors may or may not weigh into um, how uh, embracing the Common Core looks in the end in your classroom or building or anything like that. So this is one way of thinking about things. Um, you could use this as well for uh, components of an article, which is one of the project opportunities, is to write a journal article. Um, and this certainly gives you a bit of a framework to think about how standards may or may not look. I hope this is helpful. Um, um, there are a lot of different theories to think about school design and you folks have just done an incredible job in gathering so many resources. So I hope that you take the time to go back through the course, go back through some of the wikis, do a double look at some links, um, especially ones you've all provided, and do some brainstorming. And over the next two-plus weeks, see what you can come up with that sort of brings the Common Core um, into a reality in a way that supports literacy uh, in your school or community or much bigger. The choices are very, very broad for you to think about developing a final project. All right, thanks.